Hey, what's up, you guys? Hope you're doing well. So I wanted to answer another question from the forum about the Toolbox plugin. So this was posted by Neil Pierce. I'm using the Toolbox plug plugin and the JavaScript to bubble feature. For some reason, I can't store the value it publishes to the database. I can see the value in a text element or in a custom state. So I know the value is there and working. It just won't save the value to the DB. So obviously this, this question has been solved and the answer is right there, but I wanted to take this as an opportunity to just kind of talk about this one feature of the toolbox plugin, this JavaScript to bubble element, because the toolbox plugin is something that I use all the time now in every app that I create. And it's also something that I think um, when I first started before I really knew how it worked, it was something that was really confusing. And I kept seeing people talk about it in the forum all the time about how it was this great plugin that you could use to do so many things. It took me a long time before I actually realized how it worked. So we'll talk about one part of the toolbox plugin today, which is this JavaScript to bubble element that we can use. And if you already know how this works, then that's fantastic. But um, if you don't know how it works, and if you're curious about this JavaScript to bubble feature, this element that you, that you see or about the toolbox plugin in general, then do keep watching. Um, if you're new here, my name is Jacob. I am the founder of JDev. Um, and if you'd like to learn how to build on Bubble with me, all of the links that you need are below this video. So click on them and uh, yeah, come learn with me. It'd be fun. Anyways, let's get started. I'm going to jump into Bubble here. And we have a page inside of the editor that looks like this. Okay, so four inputs. All of these inputs have numbers inside of them and default values. And we're basically just going to do a calculation here. So the calculation is going to be what is five divided by 10. And again, this is just input one divided by input two multiplied by input three minus input four. And we can't just take a text element and do this math like this. We can't just say input one value divided by input two value times input three value minus input four value. The reason we can't do this is because bubble just takes this expression and goes from left to right. And we are concerned about the order of operations here, thinking back to high school math, right? So what I want to do is I want to put some brackets around this first part of the expression, but I, I can't really just do this inside of a, a text element like this in bubble. So there are a few different ways to solve this problem. Um, we don't have to use the JavaScript to bubble element to do this by any means, but I wanted to use this as an example here because doing um, some more complex calculations is one thing that this JavaScript to bubble element or just JavaScript in general is, is really great for. And it's one way that I often use JavaScript inside of bubble for more complex calculations. But again, you certainly don't have to use this plugin to do this. And there are many other reasons why you would want to use the JavaScript to bubble element or just JavaScript in general that have nothing to do with, with math. So with that said, let's take a look at how we can do this. Now, I have the toolbox plugin installed right here. And what we're going to be using from this toolbox plugin is this right here, this JavaScript to bubble element. So I'm going to go to the design tab and I'm going to drag this onto the page. And there we go. We have our JavaScript to bubble a element. Now, the first part of this plugin, this element rather, the first property that we're concerned with here is this bubble FN suffix here. And if we click on show documentation, it says type the suffix to create a function name. For example, type a and a function named bubble FNA is created, ready for JavaScript to call. Now, if that sounds like complete gibberish, that's okay. It did to me at first too, but let's take a moment here and just talk about what a function is in JavaScript. Okay, so I'm gonna hop over to this tab right here on CodePen. And we're going to play around a little bit with some code here. And I'll have to move myself out of the way to the left in order for you to see this properly. But what I'll do is I'm just going to put a button on our page here. There we go. So we have this button. And if I click on it right now, nothing is happening. 
But what I can do is I can create a function down here that I can call when this button is clicked. Now, a function in JavaScript is basically just like a, a piece of code, a set of instructions that will do something when you call it. Okay, so for example, the way that we create functions in JavaScript, we can create them in a few different ways. But what I can do is I can say function um, do, or let's just say say hello, which is the name of my function. And I'm going to put these brackets like that. And then inside of these curly brackets, I actually write the instructions so that when this say hello function is called, whatever I've written in here will happen. For now, I'm just going to say alert. We'll say hi. So we have this function here that we've created. And what I can do is when button click me is clicked, I can add some instructions here for an on click event. So I'm going to write on click. And whoops, let's do on click equals. What we can do here is type the name of our function that we want to call. So when this button is clicked, we want to call this say hello function. Just like that. And now watch what happens if I click this and I think I am sharing my entire desktop. So you should be able to should be able to see this alert, hopefully. But if I click this, there we go. We see this alert comes up that says hi. So I mean, if you think about this, like translating what we just did here to bubble, it's very similar, right? We're creating a workflow in bubble. And when we create a workflow, what are we doing? We have some piece of code that runs, basically, that does what all of these different actions that run that we've defined earlier, very similar to what we have here, right? Another important thing to understand about functions is that we can, they can take properties, right? So what we can do, let's change the function name here. Let's just say do math. And do math is going to take two properties. Let's just say number one and number two. So whenever this function do math is called, we're going to receive these two values. And let's just say for now, we're going to alert number one plus number two. And what I can do now is when I call this function, when this button is clicked, I can say we changed the name of it. So let's change the name here. Do math. And we're going to, inside of these brackets here, we're going to pass these two values for number one and number two. So I'm going to say, let's just say five and three. So these two numbers will be passed into this function. And then we're going, if we've set things up properly, we should see number one plus number two. In this case, we should see eight inside of an alert. All right, so if we click on this, there we go. There's the number eight. Okay, so now that we know, there's obviously a lot more to, uh, to functions in JavaScript and a lot more things that you can do with JavaScript, but now that we know how functions work, at least a little bit, let's go back into Bubble and look at this, this problem here one more time. Type the suffix to create a function name. For example, type A and a function name bubble FNA is created and ready for JavaScript to call. So I'm going to create a function name here, bubble FN, say do math. Now what we can do is inside of our workflow actions, we can, let's go back to the plugin for a second. You can see that we have this action that comes with this plugin called run JavaScript, right? So let's say that when this button right here is clicked, what do we want to do? We want to run some JavaScript. We want to basically do this calculation that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to say start edit workflow. We'll click to add an action. The action will say run JavaScript. And now we can run some JavaScript inside of here. So I'm going to define a few variables. Number one will be equal to input number one's value and so on. Number two will be equal to input number two's value. Okay. 
and let's make sure that the spacing is right between them and we'll say number four is equal to input four's value. Okay, and now that we have our variables defined here, again, there are a number of ways to, to write this out. You don't have to do it this way. But what we'll do is we'll define another variable called the solution is going to be equal to number one, what was it? I forgot what we were doing. It was number one divided by number two times number three minus number four. Okay, and now how this all ties together with that element, if we look at it, what we can do is we can call a function called do math now and pass a value to this function, right? So inside of my JavaScript here at the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this function. Now, how do I call this function? The way that I actually do that is by typing bubble fn and then whatever suffix I've put right here. So inside of my code, I'm gonna write bubble underscore fn and we're gonna say do math. And you can see from the documentation here from this plugin that it says, for example, blah, 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 blah. If, if we want to publish a value, which we do here, if checked, the first argument to the function will be published as a value in bubble. Okay, so the first argument to the function, let's check this. And then just like we did inside of CodePen here, I can pass a value to this function. And the value that we want to pass here is going to be the solution, right? What we've defined right here. Now what we can do, another thing that we forgot to do with this is we want to say what type of value this JavaScript to bubble function or this JavaScript to bubble element is going to hold. Because again, you can think of it like this element exists here. We're running some JavaScript somewhere else and then passing a value back to this element. And the value type that we're passing back is going to be a number right here, right? We're going to do some calculation right here and pass a number back. And so this is happening once that button is clicked. Let's make sure this works. What we'll do is I'm just gonna create another text element down here. Clear everything. And all I'm gonna do inside of this text element is I'm gonna reference this JavaScript to bubbles value. Here we go. Okay. So hopefully we set everything up right. Let's preview this. And what should we expect here? Five divided by 10 would be 0.5 multiplied by 20 minus 15, which would be five. So we should expect 2.5 if we've done this right. And there we go, right? Calculate 2.5 if we change the value here to five divided by 20 and press calculate again, then we get some new value right here. So that's one way that we can use the JavaScript to bubble um, element from that toolbox plugin. Now, again, like I said, it's, it's not the only reason we would use that element to do math like this. There's lots of different reasons why you would want to use JavaScript and publish a value to this JavaScript to bubble element. It's handy for a number of things, but as long as I think what, what took me a long time to understand when I was learning this stuff is that process where we can run some sort of JavaScript, whatever we want to run inside of a workflow action, and then publish that value to this element right here by calling this function, bubble FN, do math or whatever you're going to call it in your situation, and then passing some value to it like this, right? Now, if we go back to the actual question too, the question from the forum was about how do I actually take this value that's passed to the JavaScript to bubble element here and save it to the database. And if you go and read the solution on the forum, the solution has to do with this trigger event right here. So if I check this box, what's really cool is I can go back to my workflows and I can click to add an event. And if I go to elements, you can see now that I've checked that box, it says a JavaScript to bubble event right here, right? 
So when JavaScript to bubble A's event, in this case, basically when JavaScript to bubble is, has an event or has some value passed to it, we can trigger an event that happens. Let's say that we wanted to save this number to the database. Um, I don't have a field set up for it, but let's just say data make changes to the current user. And we'll create a new field for the current user called number. It will be a number. And if I wanted to save whatever value was passed to that JavaScript to bubble element, I could say that number is equal to this JavaScript to bubbles value, just like that, right? That's what is passed to this event is this JavaScript to bubbles value. And because I've said that the value is a number here, um, we're fine to save that value, right? If I change this to a text, we're gonna get an error because Bubble is saying, hey, this field that you just created is a number, but you're trying to pass a text value to it right now, which doesn't work. All right, so that's about it. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below about this this plugin. And again, this is there, there are a number of different use cases. So don't think that um, you're only going to use this for math, because once you start learning more about JavaScript and all of the different ways that you can use it, as long as you know how to publish a value to this plugin element right here, um, like we just went over in this video, you'll be able to use it for a whole number of different things. Anyways, that's all I have to say right now. I'm sure that I'll make more videos in the future about this toolbox plugin because we can use it in a number of different ways. So I hope you found that useful and I'll see you again later. Bye-bye.